Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto and Economic Real Estate Market Cycles. We'll be here covering the market cycle all the way into the peak of around 2026. Let's have a look at Bitcoin and the price levels today as we've seen a low begin to form and those price levels start to take us towards a more bullish flip for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Before I get that far, g'day to one in four of you Aussies. Hello to one in five of you Americans and one in 10 of you Brits. When I come up with some other lame jokes for the Indians and Canadians, I'll say hello to you guys too. Subscribing, you guys are doing well. 30% of you not subscribed watching this. What are you doing? Go and click the buttons down below and also like the video up. All right, let's crack on with the crypto content. Bitcoin nearly at 800 billion, ETH 370 billion. We're starting to see some of these uh, major cryptos drop down the rankings as the stable coins make their way up the rankings. Tether at number three, USDT at five, and Binance at 15. So we are definitely starting, oh, and Terra USD at 19. So there's a lot more money getting thrown into these uh, stable coins and more money produced from these stable coins, which will hopefully find its way back into the cryptocurrency markets as we, we are seeing some of the lows begin to form. Now, we are also looking at the fear and greed index on a regular basis. Uh, so far, the reading on the 8th has been a pretty good buy signal. That's the 10th and then also the 15th. Now, some people are asking about the fear and greed plan that I've shown on the channel many times before and where are you going to sell this thing? This comes down to GAN analysis and Wyckoff analysis, stuff that we cover in our Patreon group and the Investor Accelerator Premium with over seven hours of course content. There's more like 10 or 12 hours there, but the bulk of the course is at seven hours. If you're interested and you just want to get started, get your feet wet, check out the links in the top of the description for Patreon. This is TIA Lite, so it's 49 a month, but you can save 16% if you pay annually. It's basically two months for free. So that's what we're talking about when we're looking at the fear and greed plan and uh, where the market is currently sitting. So far, it's shown some pretty good signals, some good signs as the market hits those major lows like it did in May, June, and July. The market is also finding its feet over the last few weeks. It's climbed to some new recent highs. Of course, that was on the back of the market dropping, but at least there is still a lot of search uh, coming through for Bitcoin and crypto. People are still very interested in it. They may not be here watching content or getting actively involved with their portfolios on a day-to-day -day basis. But when something happens, they're definitely hearing about it because then they go to search Google for some more information. Speaking of interest coming back to the markets, the wall of worry is possibly something that people are coming to the market to search for Bitcoin and crypto, uh, in particular with news. At least that's the way I'm definitely seeing the market. We're seeing a lot of news come out about high inflation, uh, raising rates to curb inflation to just basically drop that back down, which, are then, which then affects the market. So people are starting to sell out of their positions or just not buy as much. But this bad news, when we're in a bull market, tends to sell off for a brief period of time. It could be days, weeks, maybe a few months as we've seen in the past. And this only goes up to March 2017. But if you take a moment to have a look at all of the bad news, this happens in a bull market. It's a very clear uh, sign that you're in a bull market when you have bad news come out and then the market doesn't really sell off extremely hard as the naysayers would expect. So there's a lot of naysayers expecting a 20, 30, 40, 50% drop in the uh, stock market. And of course, it could happen over many months or weeks is what they're looking for. But at the moment, this bad news from the Fed, the supposed bad news has dropped the market like we saw yesterday, 4.9%. It closed the day at 3%. And now we've seen the market climb even higher and we're only 2.5%. 2% down from the all-time high, which was hit last week in the first week of January when, January, when there isn't that much trading volume, historically speaking. So we're not that far off the all-time high. Remember, we've looked at plenty of support levels on the way down to remain in a bull market as well. And it just goes back to a lot of this information or this news, I should say, coming from the Fed and how they're affecting the market with their monetary policies. So if the markets have priced in the bad news of the inflation and the rates rising to curb the inflation, and we've only seen a 5% dip from the all-time high, mind you, 4.9%, we're back up to around 2.2% from the high, then it's possible that the markets will continue up higher. I would love to see 
sideways and maybe a further downside just to get some more consolidation before we move higher. But of course, I can't push these markets around. That's just what a healthy market should look like. We should see some further downside and steady price accumulation before we, we head higher. So it is possible, as I said, market has priced in this news and they're looking forward to what's coming next. Now let's turn our attention to cryptocurrency. We'll have a look at a few on-chain analytics, which may give the reason for what we've already seen, which is the price low as we've covered using uh, our Wyckoff analysis and some again analysis. So key on-chain metrics Bitcoin uh, shows Bitcoin miners in massive Bitcoin accumulation mode. You can see here the massive miner accumulation. I, I dare say that they haven't been selling because the prices have been down. So that's why they're holding on to it, waiting for the prices to go back up. More mining news for Bitcoin. So major mining pools, Bitcoin hash rate nears recovery as Kazakhstan's internet is partially restored. Now, probably thinking what what's the point of Kazakhstan? Some country out in Central Asia. But Kazakhstan is the world's second largest Bitcoin miner. It accounts for about one fifth of the global total and is surpassed only by the US. So a, the hash rate of the top mining pools fell by 11% as Kazakhstan's internet went dark. Today, the loss had narrowed to around 2%. So they're almost all back up online as well. Further news for Bitcoin miners and Costa Rica hydro plant gets a new lease on life from crypto mining. This is why mining is still a good thing for the industry because it allows other companies to make use of their power, which would just be going to waste. A small river in the middle of a coffee plantation, sugarcane fields and a forest provides energy to hydroelectric power plant in Costa Rica that feeds hundreds of computers wider the cryptocurrency mining business. So the plant was forced to reinvent itself after 30 years because the government stopped buying electricity due to the pandemic. Uh, due to surplus power supplies. There's too much power supply in Central America, according to this article. So now they're able to use that power and mine cryptocurrencies. So, of course, if we can see this happen across the board, then there's going to be more players in the Bitcoin mining game. And that allows the space to be decentralized so that we're not so heavy in particular countries mining Bitcoin. So, again, that's just another positive to uh, Bitcoin in general. Now, some big words spoken by Pantera Capital CIO, Ethereum could soon be behind 50% of all financial transactions. So this would mean it would also continue to burn a hell of a lot more Ethereum. Just recently, there's been a negative flow of Ethereum, meaning there is less coming onto the market than what is being used. And that, that recent spike uh, is due to all of the transactions uh, in NFTs at the moment, which are going absolutely crazy. So as Ethereum is used, then it's also burned. That takes supply off the market and obviously leaves <laughs> less ETH on the market, potentially increasing the price. And we have seen the price increase over the last few days, but I dare say that that is on the back of Bitcoin's price also increasing. Before we crack on with the price levels for Bitcoin, ETH and other major altcoins, check out the sponsors down below. SwiftX for the Aussies where you can buy cryptos and stake them on their platform. Their app is absolutely great to use. And everyone internationally, you can use Bybit down below. Huge sign up bonuses. Don't get yourself wrecked using leverage, but they have massive sign up bonuses and there's no KYC. Links are all down below for your specials. Now, let's have a look at the price charts. Speaking of Bitcoin's price increasing, as we can see from yesterday, we've jumped up to 43,000 for the high. The close was at 42,700. Remember our pricing levels here. We want to get above 45,500 for the first sign of some sort of consolidation above these levels and for us to get a similar schematic, Wyckoff schematic, to what has played out during May, June, July of 2021, where we had the huge fall and then the panic and extreme fear in the market before we took off again to uh, new highs. So that's what we're waiting for here. It's possible that we're in some sort of low of like June or the 22nd of June. And we're just looking for a little bounce here, potentially falling into another low. But according to the schematic that we've looked at, uh, this is potentially just another secondary test, similar to what we saw on the selling climax. So you got a test some other tests of the lows just to see where the buyers are coming in. And if we throw it down way onto a one hour chart, so very, very short term, uh, we can see some of the massive volume that was coming in at that low. So you can see the volume here. This is around the midnight time of 11th of January. So scrolling back to see any other pricing that has similar volume, we hadn't seen that since 
the selling climax. So this is some of the highest volume that we've seen, potentially meaning that uh, whales and smart money have been buying up BTC at that low. And now they go back to test some of the higher prices to see if the supply has all been taken up out of the market so we can move on into to newer higher prices. Now, if we can push into new higher prices to continue on with the bull market, the first figure, 45,500. The second figure, don't forget, it's 49,000. Then these tops, weekly tops, so major levels, 52,000. And then to take out the uh, crash bar of the 4th of December is $54,000. So that's this bar here. We want to get to the, the top of that bar to uh, take away some of the bearishness that's in the market. As for ETH, it pulled up much higher than what Bitcoin did to its low. Bitcoin was 50 bucks off its 21st of September low, uh, whereas ETH is a solid few hundred dollars higher. The next level is our 50%. So a climb and a close above 3,300. Good signs for ETH recovering from this crash. And then above 3,900 USD is the next target. DOT is also looking pretty good at this time. So for the major alts, DOT is one of those which has some good fundamentals. Now, for the chart, it really needs to get above this downtrend. This downtrend has been in since the top in uh, early November. So break above that, first sign that the bleed is slowing. And then a, a close above the 50% level at $28.50. So something around 29 bucks. And... Uh, sideways consolidation would be fantastic for DOT. So you have options of entering here with higher risk that the market falls because we haven't confirmed any strong upside move yet. But then getting in higher confirms the upside, the bullishness, at least for the first stage of it. But of course, then you just miss out on those gains of buying lower. So the risk reward is something you need to weigh up in your own portfolios. They're the major levels that we're watching for Bitcoin to flip the market bullish or potentially back into a bearish mode. Follow us on Twitter. Use the official links down below for Twitter and Instagram. Don't get scammed out there. Use the official links. It's very easy to update you guys and post over on Twitter with these official levels and what I'm seeing next. Otherwise, hit the like, subscribe. 30% of you still need to hit that button. And of course, smash the likes yet again. See you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.